but what's the you know what's the kind of practical impact beyond uh, people connect as a result of it, relationships remain. I mean, there's all kinds of good things, but can there be an actual um, can there be an economy created within this kind of commons-based sharing practice? So that's the big question we've been asking. And the way that we ask questions always is we put them out there, and if nobody's interested in the question, then they tend to die. So we never push a question. So we we were asked to apply for um, a, a, a grant, a small grant from um, Arts Forward, and in that applying for the grant, we were supposed to pitch an idea that was half baked. And uh, so this is a, was a totally half baked idea. And Jay, you want to talk about it from from there? Yeah. So. Um... And, and what we'll do is, after this, we're going to um, actually prototype it all together as a room. Yeah. And uh, so it's, this is basically about creating a new economy that we create, a community creates. Because um, you know, currently, we all operate this. We're all combined. We're all connected by the current economy that we all live in, in a new global picture in national, um, as well as in our arts, not-for-profit community where, um, where we just kind of, in a way, force ourselves to live within this economy. And we structure our organizations around what the available resources are from mostly philanthropy foundations. And we have this real... real and ticket sales. And ticket sales, yeah. And it's, it's kind of a, it's a, a very much a mono-focus about where resources come from and what resources can sustain the creation of art, the creation of organizations, uh, can sustain artistic practice in communities. And um, you know, now is the time, right now we have the internet, and so we're figuring out ways to actually use it in a way that unleash the power that peer producing has, that the internet has enabled us to actually become all producers. And producers, and what we've you know, discovered through the HowlRound platforms is that all of us are becoming uh, producers of knowledge. How do we take this one step further into becoming producers of our own economy? And, um, and then just to quickly define economy, what we're saying that is, is, is meeting unmet, uh, get unmet needs getting met by underutilized resources. So it's matching resources to needs. And that's just fundamentally what an economy is. And, um, and we're just, we're, we want to just say that we don't have to actually only live by the current economy that we have, and um, that we should start right now thinking about how to how to make this complementary economy or alternative economy. Jay, could you give one example of a complementary currency yes. just so that uh, people know kind of the realm that we're in? And I just want to I do want to say one caveat, which is Matthew and I decided we would do this session um, about a couple hours ago. And so uh, you know, just bear I would have come much, you know, I would have come with much more organization, but we'll go we'll rock and roll with our we're winning, typing. Yeah. We're winging it a little, so go ahead. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> most most well known um, complementary currency out there is airline miles. And that's very much on a corporate model where they have uh, every airline has unsold seats for every flight that they pass. And um, it's they can't they can't sell ever. And so um, they, they give out miles so that, and what they're getting in exchange is customer loyalty. So people become focused on just using American Airlines to fly because then they'll accumulate miles and eventually get a free seat. Um, so that, that's the most common. There are other complementary currencies such as time banks, which is probably among the, you know, the non-corporate area, that's probably the most well-known. Time back, time banks. Yeah. There's also in Great Barrington, which is not too far from here, a local care currency called yes. the Berkshires. Mm -hmm. And so people, like businesses, will accept them instead of dollars, and they're circulating. Yeah. Um, so. And it's it's a way to. Um, I mean, the underlying. Can you say what time bank is? If Michael's asking. Oh yeah, time, time bank. bank. Yeah. So it's um, it's for example, uh, I babysit your kid, and um, I get a credit or a coin of currency um, for that one, maybe that one hour. And it, they're based on um, something called the mutual credit system. And, um, and then uh, I get that credit that I can then maybe uh, spend or exchange for maybe uh, at a farmer's market. Um, and, and so in the basic idea behind uh, complementary currency is that it creates a new form of wealth from a community of participants. It, um, it puts into circulation underutilized resources. For example, me 
a resource to babysit. That's a, a skill or a, a resource that I have that previous to that complementary currency of a time band um, would have gone, would have languished and, and not been activated and not put into circulation. So if complementary currency is really about uh, un uncovering underutilized, un um, unused resources and putting them into circulation to benefit an entire community. So it's very much a, a commons-based idea of, of uh, resources that can benefit an entire community and never at the expense or the impoverishment of anyone else, which is a hugely different from our current um, national bank currency economy, which is, um, and also affects our art sector, which is um, we get uh, you know, philanthropic foundation money, and that's at the expense of some other organization who didn't get it. It's a, we're, we're forced to be competitors, even though we don't want to be competitors. And this is a way to break out of that entirely, and create <coughs> community identity, and, um, and, and really wealth that benefits as many people as possible. So one of the things we've been doing over the last, uh, uh, as we've been exploring this, is we've literally just been um, having people uh, on a website uh, provided by Arts Forward in this case, uh, we've been having um, people just write down um, what their resources and needs are. Yeah. Uh, and so what we want to do, we want there's two going to be two phases of this prototyping. And so phase one is, and we're just going to do it, a quick, this is going to be the quickest, dirtiest little, because we're going to be done in quarter till one, um, of prototyping. But the, um, the first piece of the prototyping we want to do um, is to talk about, to have each table talk about uh, needs and resources. And I, we would like you each table to identify three resources that you have at your table. So we're going to pretend like this is a city. We're the Berkshires, except that we're Ash. Uh, and so we're Ashfield, and this is going to be our city, and we're going to, um, so everybody in this room is a part of that city, but each people is going to identify uh, three resources that you have um, right now, and then three needs that you also have. And so you'll kind of de decide on that for yourself of the ones that you want to share, and that'll give us, I don't know, 18 to 21 uh, needs and resources at the end. And then the real trick and the real difficulty, and as Jay and I have discussed, the difficulty of like the time bank system is that in the time bank system, resources are it's it's based solely on time, and that resources are essentially uh, considered equal. So, um, you know, uh, I guess if you were using the babysitting analogy, your one hour of babysitting uh, might be equal to another person's one hour of plumbing, uh, and so you would you, and, and you know, or your one hour of babysitting is equal to the dentist's one hour of dentistry. Now the issue there, of course, is the dentist is going to argue that his uh, or her um, uh, dentistry is more valuable than the Jay's babysitting. And so one of the so part two of the prototyping, you can just have this in the back of your mind, is how would you value um, these needs and resources based on you know how would you think about value? So because we we honestly we know the big trick of this will be that question. Yeah. You know. Uh, and so how do we do that? And so we're gonna so you're gonna help us think about that essentially. So the first thing is we're gonna take five minutes. And then uh, we're going to take five minutes and you're going to do three needs. So there should be one note taker at each yep. table uh -huh. who's writing down um, each person's three needs and three, three resources.
Hey, so everybody's back with Polly. No, you have one minute. That was my. Oh no, it was actually eight minutes. But total. Can we start with that? I just want to say. I just want to say this was really an exhilarating little exchange here because we started talking about what we we could do and then what we needed and then we suddenly just said, why don't we just do something together? We've got a great group here. <laughs> We're autonomous now, so you guys can continue. <laughs> Essentially, they say, see ya. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, we've got this yeah that's an example of, you know, uh, the, the, the actual, this, you know, it mobilizes community in a way, or cre the creation of community. Yeah. Uh, when when you're just able to uh, match resources to needs. So can can we just quickly do rapid fire listing off of resources and needs from each table? Sure. So three recent three resources. Um, providing rehearsal space, editing or writing, and teaching a variety of things: improvisation, dance, theater. Those are the three resources that we have. Uh, three needs that we might need would be rehearsal space. <laughs> um, somebody to document or work a camera, and specific collaborators. So whether that's, um, you know, I need more, more men in my chorus, or I need um, specific body, you know, specific types of dancers in my work. And I just want to say, because I was over at that table for one second, which is that there was a moment when they were into, you know, dental work and plumbing and other things. I might have turned you slightly yes. to artistic stuff. Correct. But to say that in the cross sector world, all these things would be up for grabs, but because our universe is probably going to be, at least to start the prototyping, we're talking about it within the arts. Um, but, you know, you could, you could begin to see how it could play out in a lot of different ways. Uh, table, uh, this, are you guys ready to? Uh, I, I, yeah, I guess so. Okay, okay. I mean, stop me if I mangle this. So we, uh, we seem to have a really strong, uh, in terms of advice on strategies, mm -hmm. uh, uh, different types of strategies, but, uh, diplomacy. Uh, we have several spaces, uh, and we have digital equipment for films. We also have really strong cooking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, we need uh, administrative things like administrative assistance and help uh, with assistance. Uh, we need uh, various contacts for different uh, uh, different networks, and we need contacts for funding outside of the general usual mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. How about this table? Okay. Our needs. One. Uh, we need food. Uh, two, we need uh, like transferable technical skills, someone who knows stuff about stuff that wants to teach us about that stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> number three, uh, access to also equipment, uh, audio, sound, video, stuff like that. We had a lot more about that. Yeah, three, right? uh, things that we have. One, we have space, artistic space. Uh, available. Two, we have space, living space available. And three, we have uh, the ability to teach and access to resources. Great. Great. Uh, this table. Um, for our resources, we had um, artistic skill, uh, organizing, and caregiving. And then our needs, uh, space, health and wellness, and transportation. Great. Great. And then back yeah. Um, for needs, um, we need professional staff, we need time to think, and um, we need help slash care. Yep. Um, and for resources, we um, have access, we have, um, we're connected to constituency and networks. Um, we, uh, one resource we have is meaning, or the ability to make meaning. Um, and experiential wisdom. Great. Great. And then this table here. Yes. For our needs, bad it's either. hard to narrow them down. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but here are three. Administrative assistance, <laughs> downtime, and house cleaning. We crossed yes. what? We crossed yeah. downtime <laughs> off. Oh, we did? No, no, oh, no that's right. Just we, we jokingly tried to cross the downtime. <laughs> downtime, was the first, downtime was the first to go. That's right. uh, in terms of resources, we have organizational infrastructure. 
We have an ability to deal with time management for people, teach time management, and also uh, a car. Yeah. A car. Those are the needs. <laughs> so I just want to quickly point out about the resources that have been mentioned here is that some of them, the, the, the ones that are intellectual, those can travel. Um, they're, they're not restricted by geography, yeah. whereas rehearsal space mm -hmm. is. So this is, you know, the, this idea of the culture coin can be local and global at the same time. Yeah. And the, so the economy can actually be in circulation in place in various places. And then, so now, so imagine now that we have on a website, uh, not unlike um, uh, people are familiar with Airbnb or yeah. Couchsurfing or um, those kind of websites. So imagine a website sort of like that. You're go either you're going to a community or you're in a community and you have a need. Uh, you're, and so you're, um, so imagine you're on this website and you're looking for um, a need and, 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 uh, and you have resources and you're looking for what the exchange value would be. Now the real trick, again, we don't have, really don't have any answers to this. There's, these questions are not, there's not a setup question like we thought about it. We really have it, which is how would you, what would the, you know, how would you put a value, take your three needs, take your three resources and try to figure out, like put culture points to them and go, what are they worth in relationship to each other? And just, just struggle, we're not gonna go, and then we just wanna report out the struggle of that, because I feel certain mm. that that's an impossible question on the one hand, but I think it's important. Yeah, and one way to help this, uh, just to have something tangible, is uh, rip out pieces of paper uh, and that represent coin. That'll be the medium for this exercise. Yeah. And, um, and then we'll, let's work on this, this um, the promising idea of a mutual credit system. So, for example, um, I have a rehearsal space. I'm going to exchange my, my car for that rehearsal space. And so just play out what that exchange would be, how many coins you would have to exchange for that. And what we want to hear in terms of reporting out is how you came to the decision of what, how you would value the rehearsal space versus one one hour of using a car. Um, and are you going to use an hour as the medium, as the way to value it, or something else? Five with the dynamic criteria that can be used for us just the
Had to assume right. that they were they were competent. They yeah. Said yeah. that that's what they were. They were perfect. They were perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right. They were exactly what we. They could meet your need. Yeah. 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 Specifically. Yeah. yeah. This was a challenge. And we inflated quickly. Yeah, tore up those pieces of paper so we had more. Right. It was like, if you had inflation, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, how about you guys? <laughs> okay, now we have a consensus on this. This is yeah. kind of a first draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I will go through it. So, administrative help, an hour, one. Uh, contacts net to networks, we have. Four because it's about uh, giving the list, uh, it's giving follow up, it might be making introductions, you know. So we had four, maybe five. Uh, funding resources, uh, again, that was more, that was four. Um, so those were needs. Uh, resources, at first we thought that we undervalued that we had put more value on our needs than our resources. But then we said, oh no, actually, our resource was this kind of systemic uh, 
uh, a strategic consulting advice dramaturgy, and uh, we put that at five. Probably because we have several of these. Yes. <laughs> um, space, our space was one, and audio visual, uh, access to audio visual is two because it was the, the, the access to the equipment, but also the access to the expertise. And we were teasing out this notion of time, uh, we're trying to figure out uh, time as duration. Yeah. And then, then there's time as density of experience. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And how how does that how do how do we how are we doing the time to make these decisions? Yeah. Yeah. That, that your negotiation here was it difficult or was it? It was friendly. It, it was friendly. But it was hard. It was hard. Yeah. 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 It was hard too. Yeah. 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 We didn't come to the end. Of it. That's all. That was all. But you put, you threw some stuff out there. Yeah. 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 It's very much <laughs> um, you guys to hear it. Yeah. yeah. So, I think for 24 hours of housing as I can for 24 hours of teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that there may just be a different way of support, maintenance, and active activity that they, they kind of weigh differently. Yeah, that's great. Right. That's super helpful. Yeah, go ahead. For us, it was also the same question of time and how that is equated to value, um, which made it kind of confusing on where we would place the value. We also had issues of just like the hierarchy of position, and we didn't really want to create like a, a hierarchy of time and value to it. Like, how is one more important than another? And so that creates a whole another slew of questions. Therefore, all is in the center. <laughs> Everything is in the center. <laughs> you, you never got to no. never touch those points. No. <laughs> how about uh, double edged back? <laughs> we we talked about the possibility of an exchange of professional <coughs> staff services for experiential wisdom, um, and we tried to talk about time and an hour just felt like impossible to negotiate on. So we then talked about six months to a year um, exchanges. But this question of like, I like that the whole piece around time is direct duration and time is density of experience, I think was something we were hitting up against even though we we never resolved it and we didn't even actually ask them that question. But and you guys? We totally figured it out. Awesome. Awesome. I'm not going to tell you, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to charge you guys. <laughs> and and not, in, not in this very long. Dollars. Dollars are our own events experience. The yeah. old way. The old way. Right? <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome. <laughs> Questions kind of for further. Yeah, we didn't really figure it out. Um, <laughs> oh, thanks. Just, could people, oh, sorry. There goes <laughs> but Marty had a great question. Can people attribute their own value? Is there a formula that Culture Clean could provide so that people who are engaged in the network can actively figure out how to attribute their own value so that we're learning about the way economies work so that we're building something that we all build together? Is that possible? Um, who prints the money was a big question. How do the culture coins, how are they minted? Did and how was that the same thing? You didn't know. Yeah, thank you. I just want to design the coin, that's all I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those are great. Like, Follow-up question about yeah. the, that uh, contributing. Describing your own data. Is that um, just the individual does that? Or are you asking for the community to actually? Well, we and this is where we got into troubled territory. Because yeah. if the individual does it, and I say, OK, I'm house cleaning, and it will be five, and then somebody else comes on and will do it for four, then we're back in the market that we're trying to not be in. Yeah. So yeah. we found it very hard to not enter a competitive capitalist system yes. if we self-describe, but we still like the idea of people self-defining value, yes. so we didn't completely get through that. Yeah. Yeah. And because also self-defining cost. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, there are yeah. certain weekends when I would pay 20 for that house cleaning. Mm -hmm. That's right. And yeah. so, but it becomes this whole bitty thing. Yeah, it, I don't, I'm missing the tainted, the, the how it goes bad way. To that idea, it just seems like the people either agree to pay it or they don't. Or you know? they don't. Uh -huh. And you got reviews, and as you go on, and you and get reviews, and you 
go they're exactly. ninety eight they're ninety eight percent accurate. Exactly. They say they can do. But then it's Angie's list and Craig's list exactly. just with a different system. With so we were trying to figure out how to not be that but maybe that's okay. Maybe that's exactly Well yeah, it's probably yeah, I, I mean exactly. Yes, and uh -huh. we don't know. And a question, a, a really quite sincere question, because we're always trying to figure out where our time and energy and resources go. Keep keep moving ahead with this, exploring this. I mean, are you interested in the thought of going to a website and seeing, I mean, did it, did it get you fired up at the thought of a participating in a website like this? And, and, and a, I'm just curious, like, where people, or do you go, this is an impossible, yeah. this is, you are so in that this can never happen. I just was, you know, I don't know, because it's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah well, just in the, yeah. Con in the context of the conversation we've been having this weekend, you know, I, I think it's incredibly valuable to acknowledge our resources on our own terms, and that's what this exercise is essentially about. If we can, if you can help all of us through this process, figure that out, and then have a tool to truly quantify that, I think that's a pretty powerful mechanism. I actually want to say that the tool of exploring it yeah. actually, to me, feels the greater value than the actual system of currency that might develop in our field. Yeah. Although I'm interested in that system of currency, it's the learning exchange that we just had a little bite of that I feel like, what a great way to have conversations across the field and to make things that conceive those. I am more energized by that than I am about actually using it, but I'm sure I would learn to love to use it yeah. as well. Yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah. I'm also curious about um, like a, a commons that we're responsible for and how that relates to um, these kinds of exchanges we might enter into. Some of the factors I think of there are like the, if, if we're working from a commons framework, one of our interests would be in actually just kind of growing that pool of resources collectively. You know, how do we manage it so that it's sustainable, so that nobody falls off? Um, there's ways that it kind of brings us into a different conversation mm -hmm. than like, oh, well, I can, you know, like, I'm a dentist, right? And so I can kind of exchange this skill to acquire other things, mm -hmm. but it, I'm still like an individual unit, right? like an I. Yeah. Uh, in a more, and maybe in a more interesting relationship to we, Kind of, you know, I'm no, curious totally about in what goes in a sort of managed, uh, collectively managed commons, and what stays in a kind of transactional relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, like because I, I actually do think that there are uh -huh. places where markets are dynamic. And, yes. You know, so what goes where? That, that's, I think that's a key. Yeah, I think you're asking a key question. But even if there's were some kind of thing, like how, you know, who would be man, you know, who's managing that market mm -hmm. transaction? Winter and then March. Uh, I mean, there are there are models that perhaps could be co-opted to make this um, useful. Things that you know, Craigslist works if you there's something that you want on it and you go looking for it and it's in the free. So like a materials for the arts, you you need a castle. We have a castle. We don't know what to do with it. That kind of thing. But then there's also the community-based thing in which something like. Um, grinder or manhunt works very well. Someone says, I need sex, My I need lost. sex. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but like, no, but like two, two, top for a while. two people, no, but like somehow two yeah. people are able to find each other yes. in the same vicinity yeah. instantly. Yeah. And would that be any different if I was like, I need childcare in 45 minutes, who can do it? You can't I'm necessarily do that with someone. I need a kid to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and, and, and the idea of community, yeah. that within community you can do that swap, you can say, I'll take this person's kid, which is different than manhood. Yeah, yeah. Mark, Mark, yeah. And then, I'm, I'm gonna, you're good? All right. Yes. Uh, just a, a sort of a devil's advocate kind of question is that what prevents a system of tokens from turning into basically just another money system, yeah. Yeah. you know? And because I'm, I'm more excited about the idea of, of barter and exchange and finding out, you know, actually identifying, like you said, you know, identifying what our resources are and identifying what we need and, and matching that up. And just, yeah, I got you. But, but trying to codify it already, it starts to smack up. Who's going to run this thing? And who's, and who's ultimately going to decide value? Right? Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Well, Marty, you're back and then, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, just that, that that's a good question, and then it would seem that your building community clearly and strengthening 
you know, everything by a system like this compared to a monetary one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry? You're, you're building an identified community. You're building, you know, it's a conscious way of growing relationships mm -hmm. and, and, you know, positive interdependency that yeah. adds strength and resiliency to us as so, a group. Uh, so I know we need to wrap up. Are you making a I just comment and comment? Okay. Okay. And, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead? Okay. Yeah, I just didn't know if you were wrapping this up from the end. I was trying to watch that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, I just, while I've been mulling over this, I've noticed a very distinct difference between like my personal network when I start a project and the fact that I have like friends and trusted people that I go to first, rather than like a sourced community, and that like where does the line cross between like I need something that I can't cultivate myself. Um, and like, how do you generate that value? That was my first question. The second one is, I think it would be useful to find, if it's even possible, a constant, like some sort of service that doesn't go into hyper specialized and it doesn't go down to, um, I know we keep using babysitting as like the starting point, but like what is the middle ground that we could use to maybe establish a value that is fair in both spectrums? Um, and. I, I don't know if I would be the ideal, to answer your initial question, the ideal candidate for this kind of a system because I actually value competition. Yeah. And like how do you keep the value that competition provides mm -hmm. to like excellence and specialization in this sort of work? Yeah, yeah, great, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I, would, I feel like I should go in order. Uh, how, did you have something too, Carlos? No, oh, you would, so Javier and I then. I just wanted to say that I think this is super exciting. I'm really glad that you guys are experimenting with an alternative currency because I think, you know, yesterday we were talking about how um, the current economic system isn't really serving many of us and the free market isn't really serving many of us, but then the question is what do we do? And I think that we just have to experiment and there's a whole field of people working around solidarity economy sort of experiments and networks in the U.S. and elsewhere and I think creating dialogue between those folks and this group would be really interesting to me and people who are who've been working for decades on like community community land trust models for how we develop develop spaces and um, worker owned businesses and what how would that translate for arts organizations or artists um, collectives so just throwing that out there yeah, go ahead. And then this will make this the last comment because we have to eat and people have to leave all this stuff. So. Oh, I was just thinking, I was just wondering of like in different if there's different communities, like if there's the artistic community, there's the scientific community, there's you know, each each represents these different functioning communities that help within themselves and then we exchange with the other communities. So if like science embodies people who are technologically inclined or um, healthcare that kind of falls into that area and then there's some some that connect in between the two. So if someone's in, in healthcare that has a science route that also has a caregiving route, that, that bridges different communities that then provide that exchange as long as each different area is working together. Um, I, I can't, I can't, we can't, I know can't thank you enough for uh, engaging this with us. I, it's enormously uh, helpful to the kind of conversation we're having and to get a group of such incredibly rigorous and thoughtful things. So thank you for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great. Holly and Vijay, thank you so much for. for doing that in the way that we did it on the fly. I don't know where I'm walking to right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm cooked. Uh, but uh, in a good way. Um, what can I say right now? I don't know. I've tried to multitask in such a way that I might have some way to tie this together or return it to some something essential. Uh, and I, um, I can't do it. All I can say is that I think being together is really important. Uh, I think sensitivity happens through, and eroticism happens through being near each other. The question of sensitivity, uh, you know, it's everywhere. It's not just in, in the theater. It's you know, Aldo Leopold in talking about sensitivity to, to wildlife and agriculture. The samurais talk about it as sensitivity to the sword. Um, you're raising your hand? I just a quick thing back. The original uh, Greek meaning of aesthetics is sensitive. It's, 
it's everywhere, and it, I think the question of uh, how we grow our sensitivity, um, part of it is theoretical, and part of it is, is language, and part of it is the, the pure experience of exchange uh, together. I think that's how um, we create points, uh, instances of, of light, and then that light grows, and hopefully I really keep coming back to this constellation idea, because I, I think I don't know what it is practically speaking. I do think there's some practical mm, act, act that relates to the creating of constellations. Um, and what, what inspired me uh, over the weekend and what has inspired me before in looking at the people in the room and in all this work is that there's incredible life-affirming, life-giving work that happens. Most of the messages we receive are more uh, about the, Direness. Um, I am a fir firm believer in remedial optimism, and, and 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 that optimism is actually an, an engine of culture. Um, humans have the capability to project different possible outcomes. Um, this might be arguable, but from what I understand, animals don't. The cheetah just is running. It's not imagining two different outcomes. We have the potential to project outcomes and to then work based on that information towards those outcomes. Being together in such a way um, increases the sensitivity and also for me it increases uh, the energy, the, what Schultz calls the uh, perspicacity to work. Um, so I hope some of... Uh, some of you, I'm not sure who, will help me think about what the constellation, what constellations can be, um, what those maps would look like, uh, and also how to really write a mythology of of our of this work in a way. I, meaning is is all. I think we all agree on this. It's all of our behavior, all of our our optimism, all of our hope, everything that we do is based on our relationship to meaning. The, the documentation is so important and, and everything and all the resources are so important. There's nothing to say about that. But at the same time, where's the energy or how do we make the, the act of, of making meaning out of this? That's, also, that's both uh, spiritual but also very practical. Um, I've been taught this by my son. Uh, his very existence is sort of what uh, has forced me, luckily, you know, so luckily, to have to marry those things. Uh, so I'm very grateful that we had this opportunity together. Um, I hope that it can, it can live in different ways. I don't want to propose a bunch of email lists so that we can continue the dialogue. <laughs> I do want to continue the dialogue. I just don't want that to be my... Last word. <laughs> My last word will be thank you. Again, to the people that helped make this possible, I want to give a special thank you to Javiera and Amritha, who've been sent to me. I want to thank... Uh, um, Polly, who was one of the first people, and Vijay and Jamie, who, who I talked to about this idea, and Michael and RJ and Morgan, who have been in conversation about this gathering. So if I can just say thanks to them. Um, I also want to, um, I want to acknowledge that there's been uh, the, the company that I'm a part of that's been working. I wanted to say that Haley and Je Haley Brown, Jennifer Johnson, and Sandy Timmerman have been leading all this food work. <laughs> and now if we can leave our applause for the end of this list. Um, I want to thank our students, the interns and apprentices and resident artists who've been doing all of this work on the cameras and, and everywhere. Um, I want to double thanks again to Vijay and New Play TV for, for web streaming this. 
Um, a very special thanks to the Charles Star Working Theater and Q Staff Theater who have been very supportive of this as well in, in many different ways. Um, this, uh, this communications team of Brian on the sound and Milena and Gus and Maria who's also been documenting this um, and uh, Jeff over there who's been documenting this and Evan, uh, big thanks to them. Um, and lastly, I want to thank uh, Stacy and Carlos. Yeah. Um, who have really uh, taught me about what it means to make uh, exchange. Before we clap for them, can we add you to the... Yeah! yeah. yeah. Last part of housekeeping, and I didn't acknowledge Joanna, who has been dealing with all of the hospitality and everything. Last little bit of housekeeping. We're gonna have food now. Some people have to leave quick, more quickly than others, so you should grab your food first and just let those people go first. And if you have any questions about transportation or logistics, just talk to talk to me. Um, and then please help yourself and we will eat and enjoy no chaos. Thank you. Thank you.